Hey everybody, today I'm doing a review on the Hitachi High Saturn Navi. This console just has a whole story behind it. Um, I believe in 1995, December, um, Hitachi and Sega, you know, joined forces just like Panasonic and Nintendo to make yet again another hybrid system. Um, these were only in production for about two months, at least that's what the rumor goes, and um, very, very rare. I believe they were only sold in car dealerships in Japan. This never made it stateside, so, you know, along with that and the rarity and the, the amount of uh, consoles that were made, just makes us a really highly sought after collector's item. Uh, you know, some of the some of the features we have here, um, you know, as the name implies right there, it's GPS car navigation system. Uh, this does a lot. Uh, let's see. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Okay. Well, for starters, the profile is a lot slimmer than your original Sega Saturn. It's flat on the top to complement the screen that, you know, came with this. And that's one of the reasons why I bought this. The screen is very, very rare. If only X amount were made of the high Saturns, only half of X were made of the screens. And luckily for me, this, um, this eBay seller was able to sell one to me. Now, it wasn't boxed and, you know, I wouldn't go as far to say that's a deal breaker for this console because of how rare it is. So, I don't care. I mean, it it's not the box isn't going to make or break the, you know, the console. But yeah, it attaches to the back and you could fold it down, you know, when you're not using it. Um let's see. It's a TFT color LCD monitor. It's dot matrix. So, um you know, when I turn it on in a few, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, volume and uh, position. No one's ever figured that out, unfortunately. I don't know what it does really. I've tried doing, you know, back and forth. Just nothing happens. On the side here, you have brightness and contrast. Um, what else? Uh, in the front here, uh, you have function, which would, you know, turn on the main console and then there was a tuner plug or a box that was supposed to be sold with this console, you know, I guess to watch like TV, but I don't think it was ever sold. And if it was, man, that thing is really rare. I, I've never seen pictures of it. I mean, they have what it looks like in the manual, but I've never seen one, not even in pictures. And the EXT, well, I'll get to that in a little bit. On um, this side, you have microphone inputs and volume adjusting for those microphones. And, uh, you know, for karaoke, of course. <laughs> I mean, what's a Japanese console without karaoke, right? And here's the pitch for the microphone. No, I'm sorry. Here's the pitch for um, any anything you're playing, whether it's a game or music or doesn't matter. Echo is for the microphone. That I know. Now, over here we have sound options, which um, I leave it on stereo because voice cancel, it just makes everything very, uh, like, I don't know, just doesn't sound very good. Fuzzy, I guess I would use the word. And uh, multiplex, I haven't really heard any difference between stereo and multiplex, but I mean, that's just me. So that's the front. Uh, the side, uh, as you'll see right here, has uh, the tuner in that was never made, and then AV in for video and audio. Now, once again, I'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, the side right here, by the way, this is the power brick. It's huge. Um, let's look at the back real quick. I'll try to move my whole tower here carefully. Uh, there's a lot going on, but I'll try to explain. So, for some reason, the DC-in has um, a four-pin plug 
and a 3.5 millimeter jack. I don't know why they did that, but it's attached as you can see. And it goes right here. I, I really don't know. I plugged them in both, but no. <laughs> I'm not going to try one without the other, I mean. And this would be the monitor out. And right under here is the uh, AV out. Now, before I go on, I just want to explain something really interesting about this console itself. So the modder, or excuse me, the eBay seller that I bought this from, he or she um, was able to modify this console in two ways. The first um, mod that this console has is it plays all region Sega Saturn games, um, which is really, really cool. Uh, remember I just said that this console was never sold outside of Japan? Well, somehow the guy that sold it to me made it so you can, by default, play American games, which works perfect for me. I wouldn't have it any other way. So all the menus right off the bat when you turn on the console, they're all in English. It's really great. And the second mod that this um, uh, eBay seller did to this console was an RGB mod. Now, um, right out of the box, for some reason, this console doesn't output RGB. Um, the original Sega Saturn does. I believe both models 1 and 2. But for some reason, this didn't. With a simple mod, and I, I think I saw it on the, on the, uh, on a website. Uh, just solder some pins together and put some resistors, and I think you're good to go. So I think that's what happened here. And um, obviously, before this video, I definitely checked to see if that worked, and lo and behold, it did, which I was very surprised. Um, one really cool thing. That I, I have, by the way, these cables are custom made. Uh, there's an awesome eBay seller that makes um, custom cables and just cables for every RGB um, compatible console. Uh, I had them make a cable for me to take the sound from the, um, the front, which uh, there's a lot of visual noise coming from the back if you plug it into a SCART cable. So I'd rather have a cleaner sound and just like the Model 1 Sega Genesis, you can take the stereo from the front and run it through the SCART head and you know, you'll get a lot less visual noise. Um, so yeah, uh, let's, I guess I'll start out with um, a few games for the Saturn. Um, Oh, one complaint I do have before I go on is uh, this cable is really, really short. You know, the power brick has to literally be just a, not even, uh, I think this is like a less than three feet, this cable. I don't know, I can't, maybe a foot and a half, I don't know. But it's really short. And um, I have to keep it right by the console. I mean, not a big deal, but, you know, I would have liked it to have been like, kind of like the GameCube where you can keep it at a distance or maybe possibly keep it on the floor so um all right so uh my setup is as follows um I was able to get a G-Skirt switch which if you don't know what these things are just look it up it's an amazing piece of hardware um for the purposes of this video I'll be doing a review on it you know at another time not not in this video and to help me you know use I guess the SCART in general I have an open source scan converter once again um, a great great piece of hardware for any retro video gamer but I will definitely be doing a video on this um, in you know another time so for the sake of this video and the sake of time I'm just gonna be showing off the Hitachi High uh, Saturn. Okay, so let me get my setup turned on. And uh, let's start out with an American game. Um, I unfortunately don't have any European games, but I know for a fact that it 
does work, but um, I'll just use American and Japanese games for this video. Okay, so I will be playing Street Fighter Alpha, Warrior's Dreams. Uh, one big difference I've noticed about this console is the disc lid doesn't um, come up by itself like when you press the power button. I mean, the power button, the open button. So it'll pop up a little bit and then you have to push it all the way up. Once again, not a big deal. Okay, so I think I'm on the right video. Let's turn it on. Oh, it's not even plugged in. Uh, let's see. One cool thing about this console, just like every console that's like a hybrid, quote unquote, is it comes with its own little controller. Um, the seller was, I guess, nice enough to put on the um, the stickers that it comes with, so you can put it, you know, on the controller and kind of helps you navigate with the um, the navigation system. So, all right, let's turn this off. Oh, I have to switch the, uh, the mode on my OSSC. There you go. Let me get a little closer so you can get a good view of this. Man, that looks really, really crisp. I mean, let's, um, oh, he disappeared really quick. I'll go up and, uh, when something loads again, I'll get a little closer. The Capcom logo. <laughs> So yeah, uh, that's, that looks great. Um, and just to show you the screen right here. It's very, you can see the dots on it. Very uh, dot matrix as it says. So, okay. Um, that's an American game playing on the Hitachi High Saturn. So, as you can see, the menu is in, um, is in English, and even here, too. So. Um, okay, so now I will be playing Virtua Fighter 2. You know, uh, I got this as a gift, actually, from one of my friends. He, uh, he saw that I had this high Saturn and he just couldn't believe it. He was just really amazed and he's just like, dude, I have something to give you. You know, I don't really play this game, so I want you to have it. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, this reset button, I don't know if I got it this way, but it's a little finicky. So let's see if it's going to work. Because there's, t there's two ways for me to do this. Play a, uh, there you go. Gotta like squeeze it and then kind of jiggle it a little bit. Let's see if that works. Hmm, let's see. Don't give me a hard time, Saturn. Let's see. Saturn. Um, so cool thing about this game 
is um, the Street Fighter Alpha is um, 240p, and this game, as you can see right here, let's just see. It's um, that's the equivalent of um, 480i. So the main menu um, comes out as uh, 480i, I believe. Well, okay, I just said that, right? Now look, see it goes back to 240p. So this game has different modes, and uh, the OSSC definitely uh, does a good job going back and forth um, a little quickly. So let's see. Okay. So that was 480i, and then now we're changing to 240p. See? So this is just 240p, right? Now it's going to change back to 480i, see? <laughs> but the game looks great. I mean, I'll just play a little bit of it. Ready, go! So we're just getting a little closer. Okay. So I'm gonna show what it looks like up here also. And even if the game is in English or Japanese, the main menu still stays in English, which is great. See? So, that's really cool. Okay. And kind of a bonus thing that I like, kind of want to show, but not really, uh... Well, I think it's cool, but, um... Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter, um, it needs the, um, the 4 megabyte uh, RAM cartridge, so I'll be showing that as well. Makes that little jingle whenever you close a door, open the door, <laughs> after it checks a disc, it's pretty cool. Um, one really quick thing I did want to talk about uh, before I start this is um, this also plays VCDs if you have a VCD card inside. And I found out that it has a rather rare, like the seller sold it to me like this, it has a really rare Victor. Um, I think it's like the third revision of the, uh, the VCD cards, which it's really cool. I mean, I don't really use VCD. Obviously, if you're in North America, you know, you're like, oh, what's VCD? Well, it came before DVDs, and it's just a really, I would say it's like VHS quality. So it's definitely surpassed technology at this point, you know, with DVDs and Blu-rays. But um, one more thing before I forget, because there's just so much to talk about with this console. Uh, back here, and I'll just see if I could... Uh, Turn this console a little bit. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, right there. Back here is the GPS antenna, which unfortunately this console didn't come with it or the navigation discs um, to use that uh, GPS navigation. But seriously, first off, like, yeah, the, the GPS navigation discs, they only have the map of Japan, so it's really, really, you know, useless out here in America. And the second thing is, I mean, why would I use this as a GPS navigation when, I, when we have phones now? I mean, this would have been great technology back then, but once again, this is very aged. So, anyways. Um, okay, so, uh, quick note. This um, Action Replay Plus is actually flashed to use Pseudo Saturn. So, um, uh, basically, what Pseudo Saturn is is it's a it. Think of this like a portable mod chip. It um, it lets you play any region Sega Saturn game 
whether it's official or a backup copy. So, all right, let's uh, try this out. <laughs> I get it. So, even even the uh, even the Hitachi High Saturn Navi can't escape the poor, poor quality of the um, the cart the cart um, the slot. It's just really poorly made. On all Saturns, it's not just uh, the regular ones. Even this one is just doesn't always work. Let's give it a go a second time. There you go. <clears throat> okay, so you have Pseudo Saturn. This might be an outdated one. I haven't updated it in a while, but... Um, so you have a few options here. Start game, reflash, AR, and credits. Well, let's just start the game. This game is so cool. This one and X Men vs. Street Fighter are such great games, I swear. And they're superior on the Saturn. <laughs> So that was, you know, a lot of gameplay and um, some of the cool features that the uh, Hitachi High Saturn Navi has to offer. Um, so last but not least, and this is kind of a really, really cool thing. Um, so on the side here, uh, as I said before, um, these are actually AV ins. So, with that being said, uh, if you use this right here and push it to EXT, um, really quick, let's turn this off. You can actually play or use it for anything you want. So, in this demonstration of EXT, I'm going to use the Super Nintendo to play on that little LCD right there. So, here we go. Let's turn on the console, and there you go. So, let me just change it to mono sound because, well obviously we just have the, uh, the white uh, left plug, I believe, for sound, plugged in. So. Just to show that this is really me playing. <laughs> like playing one handed all the time. <laughs> yep. So. It looks really good. I mean, for a little screen like this. If I get a little closer, you can see like the dots. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a really good quality screen, you know? I mean, I have no complaints about it at all. So. And it's really loud too, surprisingly. Like, 
Let me uh, let me adjust the volume real quick. Back this up. See, it's like not even halfway. So. Look. <laughs> And by the way, while this is switched to EXT, um, you know, the console is actually on, you know, so, let's see, there you go, see my pseudo Saturn already loaded up, so, yep, it, I guess it just uses a screen as like, you know, to play other things when you have it on EXT, so, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the Hitachi High Saturn Navi for you. Um, a really, a really awesome console. Um, I'm very upset it never came stateside. I mean, if you're a collector and you're watching this, you know that the Saturn has some really, really rare and expensive video games. So, um, you know, add this on top of it and, you know, I... I really have a fondness for the Saturn, and this is what made me want to buy the Hitachi High Saturn Navi. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and um, you know, please leave any comments, any questions you have that I may not have covered. Um, there's, I'm pretty sure I forgot something, but uh, this is all I can think about for now. So, um, all right, until next time.